Great to have you on the show. Uh, you know what's funny, Idris? This morning we're talking about the market uh, being at recovery levels. Now we're seeing activity slowing down today. What's your take uh, on what's driving the market uh, right now? And certainly, were we jumping the gun this morning? Yeah, thanks, Uche. Um, today in the market, we witnessed mixed feelings in the market as a whole. We saw some appreciation in some banking stocks as well as some um, beauty stock. Um, we saw First Bank gain today and Guinness. And uh, likewise, we saw the likes of GC Bank, Access, Nigerian Breweries um, um, being on the loser's chart. At the, end of the, at the end of trading today, we saw most market indicators down with the ASI closing on a slightly negative, you not know, losing five basis points. Um, volume and value were also down compared to what traded in the market yesterday. Volume was down by 43% and value was down by about 19%. Uh, what we actually witnessed in the market was um, there was a kind of, of volatility in the market. We saw the banking sector driving the volume charts today with Senate Bank trading the most, followed by First Bank down on and Fidelity. And we saw Glasgow Smith Line also trading actively in the market today. Um, looking at it as a oh, whole, there's quite a lot of activity. We can't say the market has a recovery stage, but uh, what we've just seen is um, a blend of both buying and selling in the market as a general one. And this is what the market actually needs to make a perfect market. Mm. Well, Idris, let's talk about some of the Fleur Mills, uh, from some of the results that came out. We saw Fleur Mills uh, Q1 results uh, come out amongst others. Now, they came in better a year on year. Uh, we saw sales up 10.1%, gross profit up 15.4%. Uh, uh, what is your take on these numbers? Yeah, the numbers for Mills released today looks very quite attractive. We saw growth in their, um, in their, ton in their um, turnover um, up by about 10% to 71 million billion and we could actually link this to um, lower wheat prices and increase in bread wheat, uh, bread wheat volume in the market. Um, this is actually a positive one for flour meals and going into the, 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 the year we don't because as, an, as a result of an increase in wheat flour prices we might actually see a slight decline compared to what the expectation was, um, expected from the company at the end of the year but all in all we still expect them to do great at the end of the year. Mm. Well, one thing I did note was oper operating expenditure was up about 19.6%. Now, they say on the back of conflict uh, in the north. And, and I'd like to ask you, uh, Idris, there's been some concern uh, over the outlook for s these companies. And when I say these companies, I mean millers like Dangote Flour and Flour Mill specifically. Like you said, wheat prices are soft right now, but they're expected to increase. Uh, we have a new tariff regime uh, for wheat imports. And also, I mean, there's concern over the impact uh, on volumes uh, with prices of flour, flour base staples uh, going up about 10%. I mean, with all these, uh, what is your outlook for companies like flour mills, companies like Dangote flour? Uh, flour mill still remains a major player in this sector and uh, looking at um, Dangote flour, which happens to be the, the second um, play, one of the players in the market, um, as, we, as we know, Dangote flour is not operating at full capacity yet. So if they are able to um, improve of their on their productivity level and their capacity digitalization this will be a long way in helping the company in um, generating more revenue and earnings for its shareholders at the end of the day and looking at the wheat flour um, if wheat flour prices goes up um, they need to watch their cost level and probably pass the cost to um, the end users at the end of the day to be able to maintain the expectation at the end of the year but all in all we expect the flour sector to make to to come out on a positive note at the end of the year mm, well let's talk about its stock price i mean we saw the stock uh, a close flat at 52 naira uh, now some analysts are rating this stock neutral I and mean, what's your take on this and certainly what do you rate this stock currently flour mills that is okay looking at the way flour mills are traded over the over, over a period of time uh, we've actually seen it been quite volatile trading below 50 going as high as 55 and certainly at 52 it's actually been trading at 52 for a long time and uh, for us, we, we have a strong buy recommendation on flour mills and we expect the price to um, co continue to go up at the end of the day because looking at the result they've released and if they continue with this trend on the positive note, this will actually encourage and drive their prices on a positive note and we expect the market to, re to, re to react positively on this as well. So mm -hmm. for us, flour mills remains a buy. Well, well let's, let's turn our attention to the banking sector, uh, Idris. You talked to that, about that sector earlier. You said the index was down today. Now, uh, uh, I want to single out First Bank. I mean, we've seen that stock uh, uh, stock price reaching new highs. It's a 12 uh, Naira 54 Kobo uh, this year. What exactly is driving this stock? I mean, because these are new highs we're seeing when it comes to First Bank. 
Um, the banking sector, as we know, still remains the most active sector in the market as a whole. And First Bank still remains um, the, the, one of the dominant players in this sector. Um, for First Bank, uh, looking at the, trend, the track record they've set in Q1 and Q2, they've released good and positive results to the market. And looking at the fixed income space, fixed income, um, investment in fixed income seems to be attractive. Um, expectation that at the end of the year, banks will actually pose a positive return on assets and this will definitely help their earnings and profitability at the end of the day so i guess investors from what we've seen investors are actually taking this into consideration and positioning themselves and we've actually seen a lot of interest in first bank and this has actually driven the price and uh, maintaining a new year high Mm. But tell me quickly, uh, Idris, what, what, do you, what do you think the impact is on the banking sector? The fact that we've been waiting for GT Bank and Access Bank uh, to release their results and they just don't seem ready. Uh, I do notice that investors also don't seem so pleased that GT Bank has uh, been losing some major points uh, uh, since uh, this short week began. Yeah, um, the market has actually been expecting Access and GT Bank to release their results and the market is just wondering when they will finally release them. But still on that, even with the delay in releasing the results, the market is still quite positive on GT Bank releasing positive results to the market and declaring um, good interim dividends as they've always done in the past. Uh, well, what we've seen, we've actually seen a lot of trading in GT Bank and it's trading at high levels close to 1780 and it dropping today to 1760. Well, the market is still positive on it and still expecting something good out of GT Bank. For access, yeah, the market is still expecting some access to, pre um, to present a good Q2 result as well. Though the merger with Intercontinental Bank may, um, they may have, they still have internal restructuring to do, but still on that, we still expect access to post positive numbers at the end of the day. And this should definitely drive their share prices on the positive note at the end of the day. Mm, well, going forward, Idris, uh, give me your outlook on the market. I mean, this morning, uh, one sector that we really talked about was the FMCG sector, where we're seeing stocks like Nestle, uh, we're seeing stocks like Guinness performing quite well, reaching highs uh, 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 this in the past week and yesterday uh, that they haven't reached this year so far. So uh, what is your outlook for the market? And, and, and of course, which sectors are going to drive growth for you? Um, looking at Nestle as a stock, there's been so much demand in Nestle in the market and the challenge with Nestle is the available float trading in the market is quite small and that has not been able to uh, help the stock actually thrive on a positive note as well as the issue that um, Nestle still remains a defensive stock and a stock which every investor will always want to buy into but the float of Nestle is very very low so this has actually um, in that trading volumes in Nestle as a whole and well, for me, I still believe Nestle still has a serum for growth in the price of Nestle. Guinness today, we saw a positive gain in Guinness today in the market, and it shows that um, investors are actually looking at Guinness as well as a stock to invest in. And the expectation is at the end of the day, Guinness should be able to produce, to post positive numbers for okay. investors to make good out of it. Well, thank you so much, Idris. Certainly, the FMCG sector seems to be coming uh, to the forefront more lately. Thank you, uh, uh, Idris, for giving us your take on the market.